Hey, it is wonderful to see you all. Come in and grab a seat. And um, when you come, wonderful to have you here. On what is such a warm Sunday morning, I decided to wear shorts to church because it's so uh, humid outside. <laughs> no, you know, if you see me in shorts and flip flops on a Sunday, it can only mean one thing, which is that we've got a baptism service today, which is awesome. Yes. And then we're going to baptize Adoka at the back. Adoka, why don't you give everyone a little wave? Say hello. We're looking forward to that later. Now, some who were here last week will remember um, when, I, when I spoke to you last week, I was sharing six characteristics of a street center church, which is a bit of a mouthful, to be fair. But the last point I made was that as a church, we, we long to be a church that is all about taking risks. So we realize there's something integral to the Christian faith, which is that you have to risk something if you want to see a reward from something, right? So we talked about risk last week. And you might be thinking, well, Dave, you're certainly exemplifying that today, wearing shorts in January. That is a bit of a risk. If I'm off all week with a cold, you'll know why. But I just wanted to share just as an encouragement, a little um, story that I experienced this week with someone where I took a little bit of a risk and prayed for someone just to give you a flavor of what very simply risk-taking looks like or it can look like in someone's life. So we were here at the church building on, I think it was Wednesday morning. And I don't know if you've noticed, but this building is great in many ways. We're blessed to have a church home and that we can use and abuse sometimes. <laughs> but we're blessed to have this. But even so, already, even since we came back from COVID and lockdown, we're already starting to feel the pinch of this building. So our kids' ministry especially is just feeling it really like too small for the needs. So we're just exploring some options that might allow us to either look at other options in terms of a, a church home, a church building. So we had someone come round on Wednesday to do a bit of a survey of the building. And as she knocked the door, I let her in, and she had her hand in a sling. And um, she walked through the door and said, hello. And it went for that awkward, hi there, and you know, I'm David, the pastor here. And she was like, oh, right. And it was one of those really awkward handshakes where it's like, okay. And we, st we still shook hands. But anyway, straight off, you know, if you're, if you're tuning your senses to the Holy Spirit or just, you're just getting into the habit of taking risks for the Lord, as soon as you see someone who's like ill or injured, your, your little radar goes up and you think, well, Lord, is there something you want to do here? Um, and over, the more I've done this, the more I think I become um, aware of these opportunities. Sometimes I, I probably am as aware as I should be. But anyway, I just sense, well, Lord, maybe you do want to give me an opportunity to engage with this person in some way. So anyway, she went out around doing her business, measuring up, looking at the, the building, and um, hopefully not too much up there. <laughs> I was saying, yeah, just look at down here at the carpet while we walk through here. <laughs> Wasn't that a lovely carpet? So she did her thing. Anyway, I was through there doing some work as she was finishing up. She came through, and she just had went out and came back in. And she just came in really naturally and said, oh, this shoulder, you know. And she just told me briefly what had happened. She had slipped when she was walking the dog, um, cracked her shoulder. <laughs> Let's just think it sounds familiar, right? <laughs> and... Um, and she was in a lot of pain. And, and she said to me, we've been to the doctors, haven't been able to do anything about it yet. They're all confused about what's causing the issue. And then she said, it, it just won't heal. And she used that word heal. And I thought, well, if that's not an invitation to kind of ask her if she wants prayer, I don't know what is. So I said to her, um, well, I said to her something like, um, well, I'm a, I'm a pastor here. I would love to, if, if you don't mind, if I could pray for you. We believe in healing kind of thing. And she says, well, I'm not religious, which I should have said, either am I, but I didn't. Um, she said, I'm not religious, but fine. And I think usually when I say, do you mind if I pray for you? People are thinking, oh, that's nice. You've got to go home and pray for me at home. That's, that's nice as a pastor to do that. So she was somewhat surprised when I said, okay, well, I'll just come over and I'll pray for you just now. She was like, oh, that's <laughs> okay. But she was totally fine with it. And she was really open. And nearly every time I've asked, would you like me to pray for you to someone out in the streets or whatever it is? I don't think anyone has said no yet. But we have this huge fear sometimes that if I ask them, 
they're going to say, no way, I'm not going to let you anywhere near me with your prayers. Everyone I've ever asked has been like, yeah, okay. Even if they're not that keen, they'll still usually let you do it just to, because they don't know how to respond. No one's ever asked them probably, would you like me to pray for you? Anyway, so I very simply put my hand on her shoulder and just prayed a, literally like a 20, 25 second prayer. Lord, you know what's the problem with this uh, girl's shoulder. You know how to heal it. Please heal her in the name of Jesus. Let the doctors be surprised by whenever they go and do some more scans about the healing that's take, taking place in the shoulder. In Jesus' name, amen. Simple as that. And that was it. My dad actually came through the door a few seconds later, so it kind of brought a very neat end to that little moment I had with her very naturally. But hey, I have no idea what's happened to that last day since I spoke to her. I, I have no idea. But what I do know is that the Lord's not really put the responsibility on me for the result. He's put the responsibility on me, I think, for taking the risk and just putting it out there and just sowing a seed. So I don't know whether she'll get healed or not as a result of that prayer. I believe that God can heal her and I believe that his heart is to heal her. Um, so let's believe that he will. But it's the risk-taking element that I think is important for us to capture. Let's be people that are like tuning our senses to the leading of the Holy Spirit. What do you want to do, Lord? And when someone walks into your sphere of influence, maybe with a an injury or an illness or just something you detect in your spirit about that person. Just be open to the Holy Spirit leading you and, and just be bold and courageous and use it as an opportunity because who knows what will happen in the life of that person. So risk taking is something crucial to our church as we look to be this church that moves from the seats to the streets this year. Let's be a church that takes risks. Now, that doesn't mean the only place we take risks are outside because in this building when we come here on a Sunday we need to be comfortable taking risks inside the building I wonder what that looks for, like for you this morning it's very easy especially if you've been a Christian for decades and decades and years and years to come to church and it's routine and it almost becomes monotonous and you can just fall into the rhythm of what you've done every Sunday maybe this Sunday the Lord wants to break you out of that and do something new in your life today. Maybe he wants to release a revelation to you. And some, something about you've never experienced before. A truth maybe. That you've never fully captured. It, in your head, in your heart. He wants to do something new in your life. And maybe there's something you'll have to do. To risk something. Maybe you'll have to become vulnerable in worship. In a way that you may be uncomfortable with. Or maybe you'll have to speak to someone after the service. And share something with them that the Lord's put in your heart. Maybe you haven't done that before. I don't, I don't know what it looks like to you, but let's take a risk this morning. Let's not just be content to play it safe and just leave this building the same people that we came in to it. Let's believe that the Lord is here to change us this morning for the better. So Adoka is taking a risk later. We love your spirit, Adoka, of taking a risk and being baptized, especially when the water heater is broken. But... Uh, <laughs> That is definitely a joke. It's nice and warm in there, I promise. Um, so let's pray. Let's open up our time together and let's invite the Lord, the Holy Spirit to come and just meet with us this morning in a, in a way that changes us. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you that with you, we come to these places, to church, to meet with our fellow Christian family. And that's a beautiful, wonderful thing. And it's wonderful meeting together and sharing each other's lives and joy together. But we know there's something far, far beyond that, something supernatural and spiritual that is taking place here today as we come together as your body. And Christ, we just ask you to come and move in your power this morning in our lives. We pray that as we have the joy of baptizing someone, that your Holy Spirit would just do a work in her life in a powerful way that would just spill over into all of our lives who are watching and joining her and supporting her in this special moment. So I pray for those people, Lord, the ones who are on the verge of taking a risk this morning. Holy Spirit, just nudge them over. Get them over the line. Let them open up themselves. Let them become vulnerable in a way that opens up their heart to be filled by your love and your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand and let's sing some worship to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I 
was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my turn Till I
And break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the life, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name. Amen. Amen. Let's lift it up. Lord, we thank you for the great things you've done in our lives. Hey, if God's done a great thing in your life, at any point in your life, why don't you put your hand up? Oh, come on, Eno. Do you want to share the great thing that God's done in your life? Come on. You're waving so vigorously at me. Yeah? Come on. Let's invite Eno up to share. Come, Eno. Come and bless us. Let's hear of one of these great things. That the Lord has done. <laughs> um, Pastor John. So that was a pastor before Pastor David. And Pastor Brian. He said there are some testimonies that you cannot share. <laughs> and that's one of my testimony. <laughs> but I stand here before the God that sees it all. And the God that knows it all, I testify, people of God, I have seen God do a great thing. Before, I read about it in the Bible. I read about the greatness of God in the Bible. I'm a Bible study teacher. I read about it. And you read books and people say the things that God has done. But until you experience it yourself, our God, he is a great God. You know, Pastor T.J. Jake says, except you pass through the fire, you would not know if God can save in the fire. <laughs> except you've been in the lion's den and God delivered you. You cannot testify that God delivers from the lion's den. I have gone through the fire. I've been in the lion's den and God has delivered me. And I give him the glory. It's awesome. Because, you know, sometimes I feel like um, we, you can't take your seats, by the way, just now. Um, we, we fall into the mistake often of thinking the thing that's going to convince someone uh, that God is real is that if we intellectually move them from point A to point B, where we come with this intellectual argument. And I'm not saying that that's not important. There's a real place for apologetics and intellectual discussion. Because we've got a, a, a real reasonable faith. There's an intellectual argument for Christianity, which is, is awesome. But also, when someone like Eno stands up and just shares from her experience, how can you argue with that? 
She's saying that through her life, her testimony is that she's seen God doing great things. Now, I know, because I know so many of you so well, I know that I could pluck any number of you up here, and the testimony would be exactly the same. God has done great things, is doing great things, and we believe will continue to do great things in your life and in the life of this church. Amen? Amen. Now, we're going to hear some of these great things that are going on right now because I want you to give a big, warm round of applause to Visanthi and Daniel. Come on. And they are just going to share with us a little um, testimony about what God's been doing in your life. Now, I was thinking, maybe I should move this out of the way for you, Daniel, is it? Because we might not see if you're behind here. So let me put this behind here, over here. And uh, over at you, Visanthi, delighted to hear what God's doing in you guys' lives. Good morning, church. Daniel is going to um, uh, say the Bible verses from the uh, chapter, uh, Psalms 23 and Psalms 91 by memory. If you wanted to say that, then I'll, I'll just share a quick uh, testimony after that. The thing I wanted to say, say is um, our God is a great God, isn't it? Um, to be honest, um, uh, just I want to ask you a quick, quick thing. How many of you watch uh, uh, the Indian soap, you know, like a series, long series, soap, serials? Has anyone watched the Indian soap? Daniel. I can see that most of them are blessed here. Thank God you didn't watch the Indian soap. Because if you see the Indian soap, uh, one, one long time ago, I've been to India. Uh, we had a family function. So, so many aunts and my grandparents, they all were sitting, my next door neighbor, they were they all were sitting, and they were, uh, the heated conversation was going on there. And I can see that one of my aunts, she was scolding like anything, and uh, how can she do that? that, much, that she mentioned the name, and she said, she couldn't do that to the daughter-in-law. How can she say, th throw her out from the house? Something like that heated conversation. I was wondering, because I was here and I, I'd been to that function, I thought no one, I, I don't think anyone in our family was that much bad, sending the daughter-in-law, uh, uh, throw the daughter-in-law away. I was wondering, I asked my sister, is anyone uh, like that? And she said, no, I don't think so. Then th they were talking and talking, then I'd been to them, and then I realized one of the soap, in that soap, the lady was so bad and that much influence, they got it and they were scolding like anything. Then th I thought, thank God, it's not in the family, it's only, only in the TV series. <laughs> I couldn't believe that that much. Uh, and even th that thing I wanted to say is, the soap, we had lots of sentimental, lot of family things. If I don't want to watch it. If any time I watch it, I was so, uh, even that one, give me tears. I was so, 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 uh, I was very, very, uh, what I, I, I'm not a strong person, so even watching soap give me tears. I, was, I wasn't a strong person. But one thing I wanted to share you is, um, in 2 Timothy 1.12, says like that, uh, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that, keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So I believe that the things I have committed to unto him, he is able to guard until the day he comes back. Uh, amen, amen. Because I was so worried when uh, I had Joshua, then Daniel, I promise it's same XX, same XY, but different characters. Joshua is different, Daniel is different. Uh, then Daniel took ages to talk. So I was so, so, so much worried. I was really worried, but after I read that verse, it gave me a lot of courage. Then I just commit everything, even my job, my children, my work, husband, when whatever it comes to my mind, I just put that into that verse. Lord, I gave it to your hands. I know you will, you will take care of it until the day you come. Praise God. We, so we have that God in, with us, isn't it? How good. <laughs> Thank God. And um, a few weeks ago, thank you, church. 
you were so supportive to me all these years. Since 2008, I'm here. You were so, so supportive. Thank you, Pastor, for all the, uh, you know, the encouragement you gave me all these years. And few weeks ago, uh, I think Ali mentioned to Pastor David, and Pastor David was mentioning about, Joshua was saying Psalms 23 and 91. I took it as, the I thought Danny won't do that because I encouraged Joshua to do that. I thought, mm, oh, okay. Then after I came to know, why can't I try? So I made, uh, I asked Danny, can, do you want to memorize Psalms 23 and Psalms 91? And he memorized it. In fact, he was so quicker than Joshua. He, he just, <laughs> he was much quicker than Joshua and he memorized it. And do you want to say it now? Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I'll fear no evil. For you are with, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house, Lord, forever. Thank you. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue in every trap and protect you from deadly deceit. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promise are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors in the night, nor the hour that flies in the days. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, those evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, your refuge, if you make the Lord, if you make the Most High your shelter, the, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your homes. For He will order the angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't hurt your foot in with a stone. You will trample on lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will, uh, I will rescue those who love me. I will, I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will value them with a long life and give them my salvation. just leave it to God. He didn't speak for a long time. I was really worried. I thank God. I, I felt, you know, we have that same, whenever someone having the baptism, we had that same, like, I'm so happy that Danny can manage to sell the, say the Bible verse today. I mean, thank God. Christ God. Just stay a minute. That was amazing, wasn't it? Like, Danny, just stay a second, buddy. We'd love to pray for you. Um, we should probably get you to pray for us, to be fair. But um, that was amazing. And um, it's incredible when you, when you start to take in the word of God up here, and you speak it out here, and then you let it sink into here, what it does to your life. And we're just going to pray over you just now, because and we just want to prophesy that, Lord, you are going to do great things through this chap. Great things. You, you said, it's recorded in your word, that, that when we really put our faith in you, Lord, that you'll do the things that you did, and even greater things you will do through us. And I just pray that for, for this young man, Daniel. When he reads the Bible, I pray that he realizes this isn't some 
experience that people had 2,000 years ago, but the things written in this book are things that he can bring into 21st century Scotland where he lives. Let him do mighty things, Lord. Let us be amazed at your grace, your mercy, and your power working in and through his life. It's a joy to see him grow. Thank you for him. And bless his parents, Lord, as they steward this gift that you've given to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well done. Well done. Big round of applause. Wow. Incredible. You know, it really is. And it's, it's a lovely... We, we long to be a church where p- young kids, par- um, teenagers, young people can come and develop and grow. And Ali, um, you and your team do a fantastic job. Shall we give Ali a big round of applause? <laughs> the Sunday school teachers, the leaders, developing um, these little guys and girls in a beautiful way, discipling them, equipping them. We're really grateful for you. We really are. Okay, we're going to move on um, and we're going to get Adoka baptized in a minute and what we'll do is we'll get Adoka up and she's got a few words that she wants to share so I know she's been looking forward to all week haven't you Adoka sharing your testimony but she's got to share a few words with us what why don't you go away say hello to someone you've maybe not spoken to in a while before that will give me and some of the guys a chance to clear some of the stuff off the baptism tank then after that we'll get Adoka up and we'll baptize her okay go and say hello to someone and we'll be back in a few minutes So, let me just give you a very quick snapshot about what we're doing and why we're doing it this morning. Because, um, hey, very few people probably in the United Kingdom will wake up on a Sunday thinking, I'd like to get into a tank of water and then get dunked underneath it. It probably isn't um, everyone's experience. So why do we do that? What is that about? Let me tell you very, very quickly in a couple of minutes why. Baptism. So... Let me get the right slides up. Okay, you know what? I don't even know where the slides are. Um, Baptism is taken from the Greek word baptizo, which means to literally plunge something and repeatedly dip it. It's the word that was given if a, a ship sunk. It was baptizo. It was dunked underwater. It was sinking. It was going under. Now, we describe baptism as this. It's a physical event with a spiritual effect. So something that Adoka is going to be doing physically. She's physically getting into a tank of water, physically going underneath it, and physically getting pulled back out of it. It's a physical event with a spiritual effect. The physical part of it is over here. We're going to put her under the water. But what's happening spiritually to Adoka when we do that? Well, we describe it here at Silver City. I'll see if this goes up on the screen. As this, it's three things, a bath, a burial, and a resurrection. A bath, a burial, and a resurrection. Baptism's a bath. Listen to this. What are you waiting for? This is what it says in Acts 22. What are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, wash away your sins by praying to the Lord. So baptism, it's a way that as we come in faith, through repentance, we say, Lord, I realize that I need Jesus as my Savior. He invites us into this baptismal experience. And part of it is it's a cleansing. It cleanses us, not just on the outside, um, but it cleanses us within. It's a spiritual cleansing, which is a beautiful thing. So it's a bath. It's a burial. It sounds a bit morbid, but when you see it in its true context, it's anything but. Baptism's a burial. Colossians 2 says this. And when you were baptized, it was the same as being buried with Christ. So when someone's baptized, they're uniting themselves with the death of Christ. That's the whole act. As we lower Adoka down into the water, it's symbolic of Christ as he died for our sins and was uh, crucified and then died. This is us uniting ourselves to the death of Christ. But thank goodness it doesn't end there. Because if it did, it would be a very tragic event. Thank goodness there's a third part, and it's the resurrection. And as Adoka is lifted out of the water, it symbolizes the resurrection of Christ. Romans 6 says this, Don't you know that all who share in Christ Jesus by being baptized also share in his death? When we were baptized, we died 
and we're buried with Christ. That's what we're talking about. This is when we're going down. We're uniting ourselves to the death of Christ. We died and we're buried with Christ. We were baptized so that we would live a new life as Christ was raised to life by the glory of God the Father. And we just believe, Adoka, as, as you take this step in your life, you're going to experience just some of the beauty of the Christian faith in a whole new way. As you unite yourself to Christ in this special, precious, personal way, you're also going to experience the resurrection power that he has available for you to live a victorious Christian life today. So that's very, very quickly what baptism is about. It's a physical event with a spiritual effect. And we believe that it's a bath, it's a burial, and it's a resurrection. Adoka today is given a public declaration of a personal, intimate faith. And we're really excited about that. So without further ado, shall we give Adoka a big, warm round of applause? And we're just going to hear a little short testimony from Adoka about how the Lord's worked in your life. And then we'll have a chance to pray for you. And then Aji Senior and I are going to get into the tank and baptize you. So over to you, Adoka. Right. Uh, good day, everybody. My name is Adoka. Is it ready? Okay, so in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13, it says, For in one spirit we, we all have sorry. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Greek, Jewish, slaves or free, and we are made to drink of one spirit. Up until about November last year, I didn't really have a reason for getting baptized. <laughs> if someone had asked me, I would have just said, well, me, because my parents want me to. But as time went by, I realized the true meaning and importance of baptism, becoming one with Christ and with and with all those who are in Christ, which is signified by the death and re resurrection with Christ as a new being. I figured that I wanted to have my eyes open to the wonderful truth in God's word on how to live in the world and yet not of the world. So I'm thanking God for this privilege for help and for helping me go, go through this process and for using Pastor David as a medium to bring God's blessing to people through baptism and many other ways I think. And finally, as I begin this new journey with the Lord, I only pray that I get stronger with each step, fulfilling God's purpose for my life. Thank you. Amen. Hey Ash, why don't why you come and pray for Adoka? That was beautiful, Adoka. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for Adoka and for this decision that she's made and this commitment that she's making to you, Lord. We pray, as she said, that this will make her stronger in you, Lord. We just pray for your blessing upon her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, now for the fun part, right? Now, what I would do is I would leave my phone up here if I was you. Um, <laughs> and uh, we'll get into the tank. Let um, Adji, maybe you and I can get in first and we'll help you down into the tank. Kids, as always, take your seats. <laughs> so men will know when we have a baptism in January, let's put the heater on a little bit earlier on the Saturday. Um, but this is, a, this is a special moment. Now, kids, is the water warm enough, do you think? Yeah, it's warm enough. Um, you know, we believe as a church that the normal path of a Christian birth is that someone repents, they believe, they are baptized and they receive. So they repent and believe, they turn away from their sin, and they focus on the Lord. And part of that process is being baptized and receiving the Holy Spirit. And Adoka, we just want to pray over you that as you take the step, as you're baptized, um, that you will receive the Holy Spirit in a way that, whether it's just now standing here in the tank or whether it's later at home, that the Holy Spirit will come and just break into your life in a way that you, you just can't even imagine at the moment. Holy Spirit, do a wonderful work in her. We thank you for the giftings. We thank you for the passions, the dreams, and the skills that you've given her. Thank you that she's surrendering that to you today. And we know that, Lord, 
when a, a willing vessel comes into your hand, the things that you're able to do in it and through it are just incredible. And so we pray for her, Lord, that that will be her experience. As she grows old, as she looks back over her life, her testimony will be one where she says that the Lord has done great things in her life and in the lives of those that she comes into contact with. So Adoka, according to your testimony of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're now going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. encouragement to you because your you being here matters sometimes i think we show up and we just show up and we just do do it because we're supposed to and then we go but your engagement in our church family is really important and it allows us to get to know one another and 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 if you come in five minutes after the service starts and you leave the minute it finishes that's not really church family so my encouragement to all of us is not only coming, but, but, but be here and, and stick around and, and get here in time because every part of the service and every part of the people in this building matter for every part of the service. Um, so that's just an encouragement to you, uh, encouragement, uh, maybe an encouragement to myself uh, that, yeah, it's busy in the morning getting three kids out the door, but we can do it because it matters to be here. So, uh, yeah, maybe just encourage you with that. We're going to end our service now with a song of worship. Uh, let's stand together and worship the Lord. Agency, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet, but we shout out your praise. Thank you for your goodness. We thank you uh, that we get to be in relationship uh, with the heavenly God. What an amazing reality that is. Uh, Lord, bless these people as they go from here today. In your name, amen, amen. Stick around for teas and coffees, guys. Thank you so much for coming this morning. Amen. You calm the storm that surrounds me.